torque problems can be notoriously difficult because it's often hard to figure out how to best approach them. But once you do figure out the approach, they become very straightforward. So if you encounter a torque problem when working through a question bank, this is the methodology you should follow to simplify any of these problems that you may run into. The first thing is that if you're doing a torque problem on the MCAT, it's safe to assume that you'll be dealing with rotational equilibrium, meaning that the clockwise torque will be equal to the counterclockwise torque. As soon as you realize that, your next job is to start drawing out the force vectors. And if you have a large object, such as this 10 meter board that we've set up here, then you always assess the gravitational force of a large object from its center of mass, which you can assume is going to be the center of the object if it's of uniform density. And then the third thing is to figure out where to choose your point of rotation. And so what we've done here is we've set up a sample problem and we'll work through it with these first two guidelines in mind and then we'll choose the point of rotation that allows us to most easily solve this problem. So the first step is assume rotational equilibrium and we've done that. Here we have a board with a 10 kilogram object that's being suspended by a rope that's holding it up. We have a 10 meter long board and the rope is three meters from the end of it. Here are the forces that we're dealing with. We're dealing with 100 newtons of gravitational force from this object here and it's moving straight downward. The second force that we're dealing with here is going to be the tension force. And the tension force, because this object is at rest, we know the tension force pulling up has to be equal to the sum of the gravity of the board and the gravity of the 10 kilogram object. Tension is opposing these two forces, as tension often does. Tension always exists to oppose whatever other forces are present. So we have tension pushing upwards and the magnitude of it is going to be equal to the 100 newtons of gravitational force here and the gravitational force of the board. Now we will assess this gravity from the center of mass of the board, which will be at the center of the object at this point five meters from the end. And what that means is then we are two meters away from where the rope is attached. The force of gravity is going to be equal to the mass of the board times 10. And we can then assume that the tension force is going to be equal to 10 times the mass of the board plus that 100 newtons. And so the next thing to realize is whenever we've now drawn all of our force vectors, our job is to choose a point of rotation that allows us to draw lever arms that are always perpendicular to those forces. And uh, oftentimes in problems like this, that will be fairly simple because we only have vertical forces. And what that means is that the point of rotation must be somewhere along this plane so that we can draw straight lines and they will be perpendicular to each of these vectors. So we could draw a point of rotation there, we could draw one here, we could draw one over here off of the board. That's possible too. We could have a point of rotation there also. Theoretically, we could have it anywhere. The point of rotation doesn't need to be on an object, but we want to make it in the plane of the board because if it's in the plane of the board, that means that our lever arms are going to be perpendicular to the force vectors. Now the next consideration that we have to think about is which one is going to make our calculations easiest. One thing that we're looking for is how heavy is the board. So we'll need to solve for the mass of the board somehow. What we really don't want to have to deal with is calculating what is this tension force because the tension force is going to have to be equal to 100 newtons plus the gravitational force of the board there which is assessed from its center. And so the nice thing about the torque equals force times lever arm equation is that if you set up the lever arm so that it's zero, the torque can also equal zero. It exerts no rotational force whatsoever. And so the third rule is that you want to choose your point of rotation, one so that the lever arm is perpendicular to the force, which we've already kind of covered 
but also set it in a point that allows you to ignore a force that you don't want to have to deal with. And so what we'll do here is we will choose this point of rotation right there because now the lever arm between this point and where the tension force is experienced will be zero. And so we don't have to calculate that torque anymore. And that makes our lives a lot simpler. So when you're choosing a point of rotation, always choose it right underneath or above or directly adjacent to a force that you just don't want to have to deal with and which isn't one of your unknowns. Now that we've figured that out, we can start assessing the torque. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at the force times lever arm of this weight. And the weight is going to, if the weight were to just pull on this board, it would be in a clockwise direction. So that's a clockwise torque. And the torque is equal to your 100 Newton force times your lever arm, which is going to be three meters. So that's the clockwise torque there. The next thing to figure out is what is the torque of the board, the gravitational force of that board. And notice that our lever arm here is two meters from our point of rotation. And that if we were to have a downward force, that the job of that would be to rotate the board in a counterclockwise direction. So that is our counterclockwise torque. So our torque counterclockwise is equal to 10 times the mass of the board remember that's your gravitational force, times your lever arm of two. And now we're ready to solve for our equilibrium. So the trickiest part of this problem was figuring out where we want that point of rotation. And so a few things we considered, we drew the force vectors, we knew that we needed a point of rotation that would allow us to have lever arms that were perpendicular to those force vectors, and that led us put it on this plane here. And the third thing that we did is we chose a point where it was right underneath the force that we least wanted to deal with and which wasn't the unknown that we're looking for. And once we figured out that, then the actual problem becomes fairly straightforward. And this is how we'll always go. Whenever you're handling an MCAT question or a practice question from a Q bank, you're always going to be trying to find that point of rotation and then solving the torque problem in a fairly straightforward way so that we reach our rotational equilibrium. So now all that we have to do is we have to realize that the counterclockwise torque is equal to 10 times m times the lever arm of 2 and also realize that that is going to have to be equal to the clockwise torque. And the clockwise torque is 100 newtons times 3. So the last thing now is just to solve for mass. In this case, we uh, can do the calculations and find out that the mass is going to be equal to 15 kilograms. And that tells us how heavy the board is. The board is 15 kilograms. As soon as we solve for the counterclockwise torque being equal to the clockwise torque, and in order to do that, we just had to find that point of rotation. So find your point of rotation. Make sure it's creating lever arms that are perpendicular to all your forces. And make sure it's somewhere that allows you to ignore some force that you just don't want to have to deal with. As long as you can do that, any MCAT torque problem will be very straightforward to deal with.